Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to uh, check how we can make use of uh, VR inventory system package uh, that I have uploaded. So if you want to use uh, this particular package for any of your uh, VR projects, you can follow the simple steps. So uh, first thing is to set up uh, the uh, uh, VR uh, project requirements in any Unity project. So let's uh, start with that. Uh, first, we'll go to project settings. And in here, we will select XR plugin and install this. Uh, so in my uh, uh, personal setup, I use Oculus. Uh, so uh, some of the uh, uh, settings that I go here are specifically for Oculus, but uh, for uh, Vive and other uh, uh, VR uh, uh, sets, you can uh, go for OpenVR. Currently, I will go with uh, Oculus because that is uh, what I need. But I should install Open uh, XR as well. So the Oculus part is installed, but I will be needing Open XR as well. So for that, uh, I can se uh, select here and it will install it for me. Or what I will do is I will just go to Package Manager from here. Uh, before this, it would be uh, best to go to Package Manager and uh, enable this. So uh, oh, let's open the package manager. And we'll select the Unity registry. So in here, just search for XR. And first, let's uh, install OpenXR. So let's uh, restart this project. So this will happen uh, once once you uh, install this. So just click S and uh, it will uh, uh, take care of uh, all the things that are necessary. So the uh, package that I was talking about, uh, uh, basically when we make use of 2021.1.7, uh, you will get this option over here. But if you uh, go with uh, latest version, latest LTS version, that is 3.1, that is 21.3.1, uh, uh, in that uh, you won't be able to find this. There are other ways to install it without uh, using the package manager. But uh, just to be uh, on the safer side, I'm using 21.1.7 because of this. So let's install this as well. So once we install this, just click on the samples over here and import this uh, default actions. Okay, so once we get this, go to projects. And you will see uh, this particular folder that's under samples and all. So just uh, uh, just uh, go inside that folder and you will have five options over here. So one by one, I will just place the inspector over here. So one by one, uh, just go on clicking on this add to action base. So this will set the, uh, add it to the default set. Okay, so after we are done this, we can check this when we go to project settings and there is something called as preset manager. So you can see this is populated. If you open it before uh, doing all this, it will be an empty uh, page basically. Uh, so uh, once we get all this, then we know like all the things have been added to the default set. So here we should name it for right control, just name it right. And for left, we will going to name it as left. So that's it. Like uh, we are good here. Once we do this, the next thing uh, we want to uh, do is add a XR rig. So we'll get this XR. This option won't be there when you uh, uh, create a project. 
once you install uh, xr related uh, uh, packages uh, you will get this so here we'll go xr rip action based okay so once we place it we have to check for right and left hand control so in left you will see all these are populated and right you can see all these are populated so this is an assurance that all the default action sets that we have added are part of this part of this xr rip so now we can say the project is ready for uh, the, I mean, the project is set up for a virtual reality development. So this is the first step. So I have already uh, placed my uh, Unity package for a uh, very interesting system. So uh, let's uh, import that and uh, uh, there's already a demo seen in that package. Uh, so let's check it out. Uh, I will import everything selected. So after we get it, uh, so we will be switching to this particular scene. Uh, so yeah, so the scene is set up. Uh, let's uh, check it out and let's see if it runs as we expected. So the demo seems to be working as expected. So let's take a look at the uh, scene and uh, how it's structured so that you can set up uh, the uh, similar things in your scene so that you will get a, a good performing uh, VR in your system for your game or your application. Uh, so yeah, uh, so uh, let's uh, not take a look at the direction light. So this is the default that we get. So this is uh, XR Interaction Manager. Uh, that is uh, pretty much needed for all the interactions to work and uh, in this XR I have added this uh, input action manager so uh, this is the default uh, whatever you, you get uh, once you import uh, this uh, interaction manager package uh, so I'm just taking that apart from that uh, uh, this is something that I have set up uh, so uh, there's nothing much to take a look at it here yeah in manager there are two managers basically so input manager is the one that takes care of all the input that comes from user so basically in this case it's the controller so all the button presses and all are mapped in input manager for this particular demo or we can say this particular package of mine what i have done is i have created a different set of action maps over here so basically there are only two as uh, uh, currently for this particular demo uh, i am just taking a uh, grip and trigger press so you can see like these two are the mappings that I have done. So these two mappings are reflected over here. Okay. So basically what ha happening here is the input manager takes input or the events uh, from these two inputs. Uh, so uh, to add this, uh, you can uh, click here and you can search here input system. So uh, once you uh, type in input system, you will find both the options. So you can select it because there are a lot of other mapping that are there with the default set. I don't want to alter any of that. Maybe because uh, you will be using this for some other uh, input that you are already tracking in your game. Uh, so I am not disturbing any of the default sets. So this is a new action I have added and you can uh, add these two in the input manager uh, so with this you will be able to get all the input basically these two as far as the demo is concerned uh, from the controllers and the user interacts and these two will be further uh, mapped onto the other action that are there in your uh, hands basically the hand controller and uh, here we have the inventory manager so yeah as the name suggests it uh, basically manages all the uh, tasks related uh, inventory so all the communication that happens as far as the inventory system is concerned uh, that all goes through this particular uh, script uh, this, this is over here so it, it takes uh, takes a, a reference of uh, inventory so where this inventory is placed actually so let's take a look at that 
in XR rig, uh, so basically we have the main camera and left hand, uh, right hand controllers. So what I have done is, uh, so for both I have created a controller. Uh, this is uh, my own model actually. I uh, created with the basic shapes that's uh, available with unit itself. Uh, so uh, both left and right, I have created two separate prefabs and have placed it under the uh, specific controllers. And for right controller, what I have done is, I have placed the inventory system uh, under uh, uh, right controller parent. So uh, basically uh, what happens is this, this handle is the main uh, controller actually. So this is just a placeholder and uh, handle is the uh, uh, object that uh, holds uh, all the components related to the hand controller. So basically the, it represents the controller that you hold in your hand. Uh, so this is the script. So more details have been uh, placed in the document that is uh, there uh, in the uh, documents uh, uh, folder over here. You can uh, take a look at it. So uh, basically this is the uh, script that uh, handles all the inputs from uh, user. So what happens is uh, the input uh, manager, it takes the uh, input from the controllers and from here this uh, in input uh, this thing, uh, hand controller takes the data, uh, basically the event, the, 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 this uh, particular script uh, is uh, what we can say has subscribed to all the events in input manager. So that's how uh, the hand controller uh, gets notification that okay, this particular thing has been done. So once uh, that particular thing is done, then the respective uh, methods are called. Uh, so yeah, as far as the scene setup is concerned, so XRig holds the inventory and the uh, prefabs that represent your hands in the virtual world. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at this uh, inventory. So yeah, as the name suggests, this is the uh, object or the uh, script over here that takes care of the uh, inventory. So basically, if you uh, uh, get a collectible and uh, place it over this uh, drop area and all, so uh, it goes to inventory basically and this takes care of uh, storing it. And the inventory has multiple slots. Okay, so this has a drop zone and multiple slots. So for, for the demo, I have placed only four. So as you can see here, here there are four slots and the design of this inventory is pretty bad. Actually, I'm not a designer. Basically, I'm just a programmer. So the design is pretty bad. I'm pretty sure you can come up with a better design uh, where all the slot looks uh, really good and the numbers and all that are pretty uh, uh, good to look at. And this is the uh, drop area. So all whatever you collectible you collect will be dropped here. So in your uh, 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 demo or in your what you can say the game or uh, uh, the what 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 is that simulations or whatever it is, uh, there you can have some sort of a ball or something like that. So it it's more intuitive to the user that uh, whatever he has collected will be dropped over here and it will reflect in the inventory. So I'm pretty sure a designer will uh, make a better decision about the basic layout and how this looks. So what happens is uh, an inventory can have multiple slots. Okay, so uh, inventory, it uh, takes care of uh, initializing the slots. So here all the slots are placed. So whatever the number of slots are here, uh, so inventory will take care of uh, everything related to these slots. Uh, so, uh, and there is a drop zone. So basically what this drop zone does is it just keeps on sensing for some collectible. So as soon as some collectible touches this, so a particular method gets triggered and uh, uh, that particular method will take care of uh, taking that collectible from your hand and passing it on to the inventory. That all the communication goes through inventory manager. So again, uh, this has been covered in the document. So you can surely check it out for uh, the further details. Okay, so basically what you have to do is if you want to set up this same thing in your uh, uh, scene. So basically have a particular inventory set up uh, somewhere like maybe static or maybe it's part of the user hand itself. Uh, so this inventory will have this inventory script and this particular object will have some child uh, uh, object that are inventory slots. You can have as many as you want and just make sure that this inventory has reference to all the slots that it has. So once we are done. This uh, drop zone can be anything. This, it, this is just a game object, okay? I mean, this is just a, a 3D object that you have, you have to place and it has a box collider, okay? So uh, once like whatever uh, object that you drop in here uh, will be passed on to inventory through uh, inventory manager. So this is the basically how uh, inventory should be set up. So as you have seen in the uh, demo, uh, uh, 
this uh, inventory a, like basically is, is a part of right hand and uh, it's it's kind of easy for the user to move, walk around and collect all the things that he wants to collect so that's why i have kept it as part of the right hand uh, so yeah so this is the inventory and apart from that i have uh, three ob uh, collectible objects that are there uh, so i have created a pool of that so uh, in here we will just check like what's all attached to it so basically these all these are collectible okay the red foot uh, green foot and black foot are all collectible uh, so uh, this is just a empty game object that ho that acts as a parent for the pool so basically what happens is uh, this particular thing has been attached a script called red foot so basically it ha it has uh, extended the base class collectible uh, and uh, it has it, so currently in this uh, demo there won't be anything in the red foot class uh, it, it's empty class uh, just for it it's just there for the reference okay so you can uh, extend uh, it by adding some more methods and all in your collectibles that is required for your game uh, so yeah basically it has uh, two important things that is what what what, uh, what is the name that you want to give it and a short description okay and of course the uh, type it represents and the fourth thing that uh, says uh, inventory icon so what this is this is a small prefab over here that is a, a, a sh like a smaller a miniature version of this if i place it over here you will see a red fruit icon i'll place it over here and i will uh, i will just take the position okay so if i paste the position over here you can see this is a very small a small sphere or a small ball so this actual red foot is a bigger ball and this is just a smaller icon so in here i have used an, a, a basic shape to represent that is a 3d object but in your game uh, you can uh, make use of any a smaller sprite or uh, basically a 2d image to represent this that will also work fine so it's your choice uh, but uh, it would be a good to have a 3d object that represents the real object so uh, what happens is this particular thing will be placed over here over here and uh, it will uh, be the representation of the actual collectible object that is stored in this particular slot so uh, this is uh, what uh, collectible is all, all these are basically collectibles so all these red, red foot have red foot script attached green have the uh, respective uh, script attached to it so basically all these are empty classes as of now basically they derive from uh, a collectible class uh, so uh, in your uh, what you can say the game that uh, you are developing you can have your own implementation so basically it will be having a separate name and all as well so uh, this is uh, how the basic setup of this entire inventory system is so hope it helps you in some way and it helps you to save time and focus more on the uh, things uh, that the major things that are there that, that are part of your game. So yeah, uh, that's it uh, for this video. Uh, thanks for watching.